is ever going to even be allowed on YouTube long term. I'm going to be like backing up all of the videos and probably uploading them somewhere else so that people can view them somewhere else. But I do hope that it actually does build up some sort of steam on YouTube and that at the very least I can argue my way out of that hole when it does happen. But if you do want to actually help me out, you know, directly, you can donate to me on Patreon. I think right now I'm offsetting about $16 per month of the cost of making series like these and with all of the audio and video equipment upgrades that I want to do or already have done, you know, every bit of, every bit of Patreon help, helps. Anyways, I haven't gotten too much done already. I'm going to kind of show basically from the very beginning and my entire purpose of doing things the way that I'm doing is to show things from as what I believe to be a realistic perspective. I'm going to be keeping things incredibly cheap, both because, like I said, I'm making like $16 a month on Patreon right now, and because I think that's kind of true to life for malware developers in the real world. I don't think they're going to be spending a ton of money on frivolous stuff. So I'm going to be keeping things cheap and or free. I'm going to be referencing material from books that I'll show later on, and I'm going to be referencing a bunch of blogs. If I do use anything that is not free and or open source, I'll kind of explain my reasons there, but I don't really foresee that being a problem. Um, and all of the things that I do have to pay for, they're going to be cheap. I'm already foreseeing using DigitalOcean as a hosting provider and all of that fun stuff, but I will go through all of the different technology that I do use to plan things out, to document my code, to write the code, all of the third-party libraries, all of that fun stuff. So I will go through all of that and I will keep it as cheap or as free as humanly possible so that people can follow along at home. I'm also going to be using some books that I've started and stopped several times. One is Windows Internals, which will help me understand Windows Internals. The other is Practical Malware Analysis. Those are the two classics, and by classics I kind of mean people who do malware analysis and reverse engineering have read the majority or the whole of both, and people like me keep opening and then closing them every couple of months. I'm also going to be referencing tons of blogs, papers, and other online publications. I'm going to keep them free as often as possible so people can try to study along and discuss slash debate topics they're in. I'll also be referencing malware source code found online. I will not, under any circumstances, pay anybody for malware samples or source code. If I'm referencing the source code, I found it for free online, and I may or may not choose to share the source depending on where I find it. If I do, whatever you do with that source code is your responsibility. Remember, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Finally, I'll be logging how much time I actually spend coding and recording that in each video. I think it'll be kind of cool to show that X hours of development equals malware with Y amount of functionality. It's kind of complicated though because I'm not going to spend time and effort trying to figure out how much I read Windows internals per day, logging how long it takes me to read the same blog for a second time, or showing how long I spend reading technical specs or MSDN articles, unless I'm doing so while I'm actually coding. What you'll be seeing is how much time I actually spent developing. Which, if you've spent any time developing a large piece of software, you know that the time spent coding is only a fraction of the total time spent during the project. So far, I've settled on an Ubuntu development and deployment environment. Eventually, I'm going to be using email to spread the malware, but for simplicity's sake, during the dev and test period, I'm going to be using 
a simple HTTP server with Python and downloading it to the target environment. The target environment is going to be Windows. 